cast your mind back to mid-November. Gillingham's away form was as miserable as today's weather. 34 games, 18 months without a win on the road. Then the club made arguably their most important signing for the season. What was one of the things that wasn't as good, you know, as we could improve on? When things were dropping, I didn't think I was getting onto them in and around the box, you know, to get shots off. And that's my one point. Andy gave me a call and said, you've seen the result from Saturday. We want to change a few things. And I said to the chairman, what do you want? And he joked and he said to me, three points on Saturday. We didn't really know how to communicate with one another. And he's come in and we've, we just, we've had conversations like this, you know, and what it is. And it's just sometimes it's, just, it's good to talk. I mean, I go into games, know it well, feeling like I'm going to get hold of it, I'm going to bring others into play. But I ain't going into games thinking I'm going to score. Where one, you've got absolutely no thought of scoring, and 10, yeah, you feel totally confident. How would you score that on an average going out? I'm about there? six and a half. I felt Tuesday was a six and a half. I do feel like eight come Saturday against Crew, I'm going to score. If there's any doubt in the player's mind, then it's not going to help him perform at the top level. So part of my job was to actually remove all the doubt. It's a game of football. Oh, shit, yes, brother. There you go, nice and easy. Something. There was a real negative feeling around. Maybe coming from the back of last season going down, the club was, you know, as a whole was pretty negative. Unfortunately, it carried on at the start of this season and uh, we had to turn that real positive thinking around and, and that's what he's done. A lot was made of that psychological barrier of how long Gillingham went without an away win. Do you feel that really was the case? Did it become almost a mental hurdle? Yeah, it does. You can just see the body language when he was away from home. If we went in front, we was nervous. If we let a go in, it was here we go again. And it does, you know, the mind's a powerful thing. What is the thing for you? If I'm going to visualise, I'll visualise the celebration afterwards with Den probably trying to hit the ball as clean as possible or just see it hit the back of the net. Have you ever had any Eileen Drury moments in football, a player who kind of takes the mickey out of what you're trying to do? There's sceptics in anything. The way that I frame that to the players is that if this makes you a better player by 10%, what have you got to lose by trying it? And one player to take up that option is the club's current top scorer, who's more than tripled his goal tally to 17 since Lawrence's arrival. Ash takes the boys aside on their on their own and we have group sessions, you know, he's, he's got a big part of it, you know, it's been great for him, for him to be around and like you say, since he's come in the results have turned around, so you can't you can't say it hasn't worked really. Has on a match day, what's your actual role? Are you in the dugout? Yeah, well, away, yes. Uh, at home, I sit behind the dugout. What sort of things does he say? He'll make me feel good about myself, you know. If I've, if I've scored in the first half, he'll make me believe that I can go in the second half and score again. He'll just get me thinking positively, you know, and it's, it's great to have someone like that around. I can motivate yourself, you know, stay very positive as an individual, as a player, uh, but some players do need it, so uh, you know, it's worked very well for, for us at the moment. You feel focused on it, you're not struggling with anything getting in the way of the the focus when you take your time to visualise? No, nah, not at all. Um, I was getting a bit of banter about the, the celebration, so we need to score again just to, to show that we're, we're about it this time. No other issues? Nah, we got good. I think it's down to the individual timing, where you are in your career and all that sort of speaking. You know, I think it's, it's especially in my time at Gillingham, Ash coming in has benefited me personally and I think um, the team. Now, you as the Nardo pro sort of raised your eyebrows when he said he was in the dugout away goes, but you were more, Nicky, a bit more, well, that's what it's like now. Yeah, I think nowadays you need to embrace those different areas of, of the game, you know, sports science, sports psychology. You know, I think, um, you know, players nowadays, sometimes they need a little arm around them. They need that, that help motivating themselves. And uh, I think anything that can squeeze that little bit more out of an individual is only beneficial. He probably needed to put his arm around Tony Sinclair after that own goal. He, he needed yes. extra work with the sports <laughs> psychologist after he'd scored that Good own goal. goal. Wrong end. Got, you know, crew of the league's top scorers in League Two. So a point there is a decent, a decent result. For it is a good price. result. I mean, since Dario Grady took the reins back, I mean, they've just gone from strength to strength, and it, it is, a, it is a good point. I think well, they, they're four points from automatic promotion. And, um, and I think they've scored more goals away from them than they have at home. So if they can just get, get a few more games at home, and who knows, with only four points, there's, there's nothing in it. We ought to name check Curtis Weston there, because if we name check the guy who scored the own goal, we ought to at least name check <laughs> the guy who got the goal at the right end. Let's